My last video was a big fail. And although the halter top <laughs> like almost fits me now because I've lost a little bit of weight, I'm trying to lose um, weight uh, right now for a cosplay that I'm doing. Um, and then I probably won't care after that, but uh, you know, it's scale male bikini kind of a thing. So I wanna be less squishy for my own brain and judge away, that's fine. Anyway, I need a bit of a win. I've been in a horrible neck pain for the past two weeks now, and I just wanna make something and finish a thing that's really cute. So I bought this fabric for, oh, sorry, my nails are <laughs> obnoxious. I bought this fabric for like $10, I think. It is really heavy, but it is really thin cotton. So I'm thinking there's a lot of it here. <laughs> and by the layers and layers of fabric, uh, we're gonna have to measure this. I know that I have enough to make this dress. So, um, not in a video, but I made this dress right here. This is M7745. Um, I don't know what size I made it in. Can I tell? I probably made it in a 12. Uh, just to fit my bust measurement a little bit easier. Uh, realistically, I could probably make this in a 10, um, but I'm gonna make this bigger. So I might try to cook this up in a size 14, um, just so that it's extra big and flowy. And that'll make me happy. <laughs> so I wanna make this long version. I don't particularly care for um, the top part here. I think I'm gonna do the top of C. I don't know that I'm gonna do the ruffle either. Uh, we'll see. I just wanted a really long flowy dress. If I have enough fabric, I think it would be really extra pretty if I did a couple of layers on the bottom part of the skirt, um, just for volume and uh, you know, extra, just being extra. <laughs> so I guess the first thing I need to do is measure my fabric. If I had to guess, I would say there's at least five yards here. This dress in a size 14 calls for about five yards. So I don't know that I'll have enough to do extra skirting, but if I have more than that, I might just uh, go for it. The other thing is that it probably is including extra for the ruffle. And if I remember correctly, the ruffle piece is not a rectangle, it's like a weird shape. So they're probably including a lot of extra fabric just for that ruffle. So before I look into here, let's measure my fabric. I have five and one eighth yards. So let's just start figuring this out. I have run into a very small problem and I figured I would show you how I plan to navigate said small problem. So I'm gonna show you. So I had to 
unfold my fabric and so I have two layers on top so I can cut out the back piece um, this part I'm just gonna cut that to a size 14 so just forget about that this front does not fit on here it doesn't fit at all so I've got this piece uh, right there so what I think I'm going to do is try and figure out how to um, cut just the top of this piece to this kind of curved line right here. And then I'm gonna add seam allowance to that. And then I'm gonna cut this bottom piece off of that fabric. And so I'll have a seam here. What I was thinking, because um, it might be kind of cute, is if I make this piece um, a lot bigger and then I make it like a gather so that it kind of has a little more interest right there. So that is my plan and I hope it works. I will get back to you if it is a fail. Okay, I was gonna do slash and spread on that piece so that it would look more like a flounce. And then I thought instead of that, what I could do is um, follow this ruffle line and insert the ruffle into the dress as like a feature so that it looks intentional. <laughs> this is the skirt piece that I cut out and then these are all four of the flounces. Okay, so I've cut out all these ruffle pieces and this so that it'll look like this, but then the skirt's gonna come down and cover my leg because I made this one before and this curve is really bad. I don't particularly care for it. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out 11 up there. That one goes across your shoulder and chest. And then I'm gonna cut out 14 and 15. And as I cut out 15, I'm gonna curve the edge the way that 16 is cut out. And then I guess start sewing all this together tomorrow because I have plans right now and um, those plans are lunch. And then I gotta go pick up my kids for a doctor, which is why I'm wearing makeup now. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, everything's going pretty well. This dress pattern is really easy and I, I'm really happy with the progress so far. <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Today is the second day for this. I'm gonna see how much I can get done today, although I do need to leave in like 20 minutes to go meet somebody. But for right now, I wanna tell you what I did. The top of the bodice, because it is fully lined, it is also sewn very weird. I wanna discuss how that's working. So this is, one piece of the bodice. This is the front, the back, and the sleeves. <laughs> so the way this works, this is the back piece right here. This is the sleeve, and then this is the front. And it goes like this. 
and then obviously you wrap it. What you do is you sew this and then I have my ruffle. So then I have a gathering line here. The ruffle you sew on the way that it's going to be. Like you just baste it on to the top of this, obviously gathering it so that it fits all through right here. And then you lay the other piece on top with right sides facing, like so. Thank you. Is this tutorial working for you? Good. <laughs> um, and then you <laughs> stitch all the way around the U kind of neckline shape. After I do all of that, and then I need to do under stitching to keep that um, seam allowance to the wrong side or the lining part of the fabric so that it'll um, hold its place a little bit better. The neckline, it'll look a little bit nicer. And then I press that down again and then you turn it uh, all right side out. All right, I did the under stitching. I've got that pretty good. Um, if I need to take it out, I'm screwed because I put my stitch too high on my machine. But this is what it's looking like so far. It's a little stiff, so I kind of want to run it through the washing machine and see if I can get this to loosen up. This is where I'm going to have to stop for right now because uh, I need to get going to a place. So I'm going to take my hair out. The next thing I need to do after this is figure out the sleeves just because I want to make sure that their instructions make sense before I even start doing it. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go eat lunch with Jamie and then come home and try to figure out the sleeves better. So I'll be back to have a success. This dress is supposed to be successful. It's supposed to be a win. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Are my bangs a win? What is happening? Uh. All right, I wanna take you through the sleeve. So this is the sleeve, this is the back, and this is the bodice front. So I've already done the stitching all the way around the neckline. That is all complete. So now I'm gonna leave the side seam. So this is the side seam and this is a side seam. Leave those alone. I'm only going to sew up, over and down on both sides and then flip it out um, and press it. And then the next step is I will take the uh, lining and sew those together. Oh, sorry. The front lining and the back lining. Stitch those together right sides facing and then stitch the outer layer together right sides facing and then I should be able to unwrap that and then that should be done and I'm gonna leave the bottom open because I'm gonna sew the skirt to the outer layer and then fold it up under the lining and then the bodice, that'll complete the bodice. The next thing I need to do after I get this armholes and sides sewn together is work on the ruffle for the skirt. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. All right, so this is the sleeve. Once it has been sewn, I need to press this seam get our bearings here. This is the shirt. So this is the back. The front goes across like this. Okay, so and then this will crisscross like that. And that's, that's basically the bodice. Once you sew your sleeves, you open it all up and then you open up the front two pieces and you open up the back two pieces. 
and you match the two lining pieces together and you sew and you match the two outer pieces together okay so you've got your two lining pieces this is your bodice front bodice front bodice back bodice back you line this up and you stitch up that edge okay and then when you unfold it it'll look like this is the sleeve and this is the bodice front. Good morning, today is day three. I don't have plans today, although it is 11. I was waiting for my Advil to kick in uh, for my neck pain, which is intense right now, but it's fine right now so I can sew. Monday I had stuff in the middle of the day and then Tuesday I had stuff in the middle of the day. So today is Wednesday and I have no stuff, actually until like 7, 6 p.m., but it's fine. That means I have no stuff until I pick up my kids from school. Let's get to it. I made um, the ruffle gather on my older sewing machine and I realized that the stitches were, the thread stitches, the top thread stitches were going into the bobbin thread, like breaking the bobbin thread and sewing into. So I could not pull a gather, which is so funny because I was literally texting my cousin and I was like, no, I don't need to use my gathering foot because it's just really short and easy. Like it's only four or five yards, really. I don't know how many yards, it's pretty long, but it's fine. And then I immediately had a problem. Thanks, so that's why we're in the basement. The other thing I needed to do, because of the piece of fabric that I had, and it wasn't wide enough, I couldn't cut out the amount of flounces that I needed to cut out. So I knew I was gonna be short, so I am short by this much, which is fine, because I've got a spare bit of fabric here, and this is the very back on the bottom. It's gonna be trailing on the floor, basically. No one's gonna see it. Uh, it's fine. So I'm just gonna cut out a little piece of that and sew that in. And then I'm gonna sew the remaining piece of the skirt onto both front pieces so that the skirt is covered all the way down the front. I don't want the little swooshy thing. And then hem that all the way around and the skirt will be ready to start attaching to the bodice. The bodice came out okay. I'm not a big fan of the sleeves and how this doesn't have any stitching around it. It's really bland and I have a feeling that once I finish this dress, I'm gonna realize how plain it is because it is just one color. So we'll see. I might actually enjoy that it's one color. I might not. I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna make this ruffle and do my basting and sew that piece on and then I will uh, get back to you. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to my basement floor. This is where I'm at. So if I don't sew this additional piece on, it's a lot cuter, I think, than I thought it would be. I still have a lot of strings and stuff I need to go through and cut my strings off. I think I'm gonna skip that portion. I'm not gonna sew this on. Let's show you what it looks like because it just kind of takes away from the ruffle. And like, what's the point of this ruffle if this is down here and it's already so long that I don't really need it to be full length, you know? So I like where it's at right now. 
The next steps will be to, I need to do a zigzag on the inside around the ruffle so that it doesn't fray a whole bunch. And then I need to attach the skirt to the bodice top, ties, and that's it. So here we go. I'm gonna do that, but right now for you is the reveals. And I really, I hope you like it. I hope I like it. I hope we all like it. <laughs> so anyway, oh, uh, here we go. Hello, I was gonna do the reveal and uh, we're gonna wait because I wanna show you something. So I bought this yarn a while back. It's um, Loops and Threads Flex, and it is really incredibly soft. It's made out of, um, I don't even know, acrylic and polyester. I think I'm just gonna crochet up a shawl real quick, if I can. This color is, it's got like a lavender, but it also has like a peachy, creamy little fleck of color inside. Anyway, it's really, really pretty. I thought I would uh, work on that. It's 4.30 p.m. I still have to make dinner and go spend the evening at the high school tonight. So I don't know how far I'm gonna get on this, but I'm gonna bring it with me and I'm gonna be crocheting during the concert, I believe. I'm just gonna make a regular old triangle. This one, which is like uh, just a very simple, chain stitch and then you do a single crochet. So what you're doing is you're making a chain five space and then on the next go around, when you're doing your next chain five space, you do a single crochet into the middle of the top. Really, you can do whatever you want with that. That's like super, super easy. I think that's what I'm gonna do and then I'll be able to get it done quickly tonight. Now it's time for the reveal. Ooh, it's more exciting when I do that, right? <laughs> 